A Clear Sky Tutorial in 2017? What is this shit? Are you that desperate for views, Marco? Whoa, 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 before you jump the gun on me like that, let me explain. I know how it looks having a tutorial on some content that came out over a year ago, but I wouldn't be posting this without a good reason. As we all know, global events are up and coming, and although yes, the drop rate in the caches have been up a bit since we last talked about it, we still don't quite know what the drop rate of classified gear will be after the global events have ended. It could be 1%, similar to the exotics in the game right now, but it could also be a little bit more or a little bit less. For now though, I would just assume the worst and go into the global events with the mentality that you have to be as efficient as possible when it comes down to getting that classified gear. So here is how it's going to work. To get classified gear, we're going to need to buy those global event caches. To buy those global event caches, we're going to need global event tokens. And one of the fastest ways to earn those global event tokens happens to be completing incursions. Out of the four incursions in the game, only Falcon Lost and Clear Sky are available to everybody, even if you do not have any of the DLCs, and because of the wave system that Falcon Lost has, Clear Sky is by far the fastest out of the two. Arguably though, it's also the most difficult one if you don't quite know what you're doing, and of course if you want to play it on Heroic. And yes, you do want to play it on Heroic if you can, because you get more global event tokens from that than challenge mode. Obviously. Now I looked around a bit on YouTube, but it seems that most of the Clear Sky tutorials, including the one that I made, are horribly outdated. I mean, what do you expect if the incursion came out in patch 1.2? So I thought it would be a good idea to show everybody how it is done in patch 1.6 and patch 1.7, so that everybody here can all end up with 5 or 6 minute runs and a shitload of global event tokens and caches for the amount of time that you put in. So what do you say? You're ready to get some loot? Well, let's begin. I think that just as with most content in the division, a good build is really half of the work. Clear Sky is no stranger to that rule, however, it is kind of special in the sense that unlike the other incursions in the game, your group doesn't actually need a whole lot of damage to complete it. This is mostly because, especially in the second part, you're dealing with a lot of NPCs that will simply respawn after you kill them. And that goes on forever, every time that you kill a mob, a couple of new mobs will spawn, and until you complete certain objectives, which we will get into soon, the NPCs aren't going to go away, so there's really not much of a point in killing them if you don't really have to. For this reason, I actually suggest any squad that wants to do clear sky to get at least two healers, or maybe even three healers, and then have one of those healers run a high skill power pulse to compensate for the loss in overall damage. You really don't need any damage dealers, I mean one damage dealer could be handy, but you really don't need a lot of damage. What type of healer builds you want to use, it also really doesn't matter. It could be the PvP healer build that I created at the start of 1.6, it could be a reclaimer healer build with a pretty big station, even a guy with final measure could come in handy. At the end of the day, the only two important things that they need to have is a high amount of skill power, and they need to have Vigorous, but I think that you will rarely see a healer build without those two things. What signature skills you use, that is kind of important though. If you don't really do this a lot, if your group is kind of a beginner group, then I would recommend using two greens and two blues. However, if you're experienced enough and you've already done this a couple of times, you can replace one of those green or blue ults with a yellow ult and shave off a few extra seconds of your runtime. I would also recommend every group, including the damage dealers, to run triage, combat medic and strike back, as this will add a significant amount of cooldown reduction and sustain to everybody in the team because yes we don't really need the damage but we are going to need a lot of sustain you will see how all of that works in a second as well for the four talents you can pretty much take whatever you want uh, i'd recommend crit save for battle buddy those could come in handy as well however battle buddy is a bit bugged at the moment so i wouldn't always expect that to work once you're all said and done and your setup looks something in the general direction of what i just mentioned again it doesn't have to match it exactly um, it is time to start. The first part, I don't think a lot of people have a lot of trouble with. You gotta kill some NPCs until a guy spawns that has a bomb. You kill him, you take the bomb and you plant it on the container and then watch it explode. Then, because the container doesn't instantly break, you have to do it a second time. So, you kill more NPCs until another bomb guy spawns. You kill him, you take the bomb, you plant the bomb and you watch it explode. And that's it! Immediately after the second bomb goes off, you and your team can run to the second part of the mission. Yes, you will still have the objective to clear out any remaining enemies, but you can just skip that, walk far enough away and the mission will update automatically. 
piece of cake. This, however, is where we arrive at the hard part. It can be easy and very smooth with a bit of practice and coordination, and of course with the right strategy, which I'm about to show you, but if it's your first time, no matter how good you are, you're gonna fuck up in one way or another, just, uh, just keep that in mind. The goal of the second part of the mission is to get two boxes inside of their containers. One of those boxes can be found on the left side of the mission, and the other one on the right side. Now you gotta pick these up, you gotta carry them over to the middle of the mission area, and all of that while you're being attacked by NPCs and this plane gun, which will melt anybody trying to carry those boxes. So, let's begin the step-by-step -step guide. First up, have all four players restock over at the restock box, run over to the right entrance, the right bus, and then have everybody jump into the final area around the same time and then run to the box. By the time the first guy reaches the box, everybody has to be inside of the area, otherwise you cannot pick up the box, the game simply will not let you. It may also be a good idea to decide which your team who is going to carry the box beforehand. It doesn't really matter who does it, but knowing who's gonna do it will prevent a lot of confusion. Now as soon as that player gets to the box, he instantly wants to pick it up, while all the other three teammates try to deal with the heavy that guards it. It is best to always use a stun or a fire grenade on this heavy, as this will prevent him from using a melee attack, which can stagger whoever is carrying the box, causing him to drop it. Very annoying. But you can also just kill the heavy, just keep in mind that as I said at the start of the video, if you actually kill the heavy, he will simply respawn a few seconds later. It's up to you what you want to do, you just gotta keep him busy at the very least. Now there's one more thing to it, because when the box carrier is picking up the box, there's also a chance that the plane gun will launch a mortar at you. This mortar will also be able to stagger you, causing you to drop the box. So if you see this happening, if you see a red circle around the box in your area, Simply roll away and when the explosion goes off, instantly try to grab the box again when you can. If you decided to have one person run with the final measure built in, you can also win a few seconds here by having him defuse that mortar. Either way though, as soon as you have the box and you are certain that you will not get staggered by the heavy or the mortar, tell your team to activate both a survivor link and a recovery link for 50% damage mitigation and all the healing over time which will allow you to tank any incoming damage from the mobs and also from the plane gun. From this point on, all you want to do is walk a straight line to the middle. Make sure that your three teammates keep shooting heals at you and each other basically have them triage and run around behind you and make sure that everybody is using their medkits correctly not only to heal themselves but also to heal their teammates through the use of combat medic. Once you place the box it is time to do the second box. For this one you don't usually need any signature skills. You probably can't use them anyway even if you needed them because of the shared group cooldown so it's a good thing that you don't need them but make sure that your team is still on point with the healing and giving you any needed combat medics if you do happen to carry the box. You can even have your team drop several support stations in front of you to instantly blow them up for the burst heals. Basically, your team has to do anything to keep you alive further while you're carrying the second box to the middle. If you do it quick enough, the plane gun usually doesn't have that much time to do a lot of damage to the carrier, so it might not even be needed to pop all those stations and those combat medics, but the plane gun, it's kind of RNG as well with who it targets and whatnot, so just keep an eye on it. When the second box has been placed, we get to the last part of the mission. This is where we simply have one player run over to the laptop on top of the car in the middle, and then press that last button, which will cause the boss to drop down from his plane gun, which then and allows you to kill him. However, as most players know, there is some time between pressing that last button and the boss dropping down, so after the button has been pressed, you and your team are going to want to run over to the crash plane and literally wait for the boss to drop down. You don't have to focus on killing any mobs, all you have to do is basically run around in circles and pop heals at each other to activate triage, get some revive stations so that when you go down you will automatically be revived. Whatever it is that you need to do to keep everybody topped off. Uh, the one minute long cooldown for the signature skills should also be gone now at this point. So if you really have to, if you're having trouble, you can activate both the second blue and the second green link. And that will pretty much guarantee that you stay alive. The very moment that the boss drops down, throw another fire or shock grenade on the floor. Have everybody shoot at his backpack or his head and burst him down. And after he is dead... The normal NPCs will stop spawning, so once you clear out whatever is remaining, uh, usually a bunch of heavy snipers and a few shotgunners, you are done! That is literally the mission, and you got yourself 350 Phoenix credits, a whole bunch of loot and exotic cash if it is the first run of the week, and, as I said at the start of the video, during the global event you get an absurd amount of global event tokens. All of that in just about 5 minutes, because yes, if you do it right, it really only takes about 5 minutes to do a run like this. One final tip that I have for the PC users is that you can actually use consumables when you're carrying the box if you press the correct hotkey. 
I often find myself using canned food when it is available. It looks pretty stupid when the guy's trying to do the whole eating animation when the box is in his hand, but hey, it works. Uh, on consoles though, you'd have to use the consumable wheel, so you can't really do it while moving, and I think at that point it's it's not really worth to do it unless you can pop it just before you pick up the box. But hey, you'll figure it out. Again though, if you've never done it this way before, don't expect to do it on your first or your second try. At least, not in 5 minutes. I'm willing to bet money on saying that I've done Clear Sky at least 500 times already. So I've got some experience under the belt. And even me, with my group, we still fuck up every now and then. So yeah, don't get mad if it doesn't work out the first try. My advice is, uh, try to do this on the live servers right now. Practice it a few times, see where things go wrong. And then try to see what you need to improve upon. So that when the global event drops, you can do this without any issues. To help you out a little bit more though, I've also left you with some uh, unedited video footage from me and my group doing this a few times in a row while I am explaining what is going on and what we're doing you know some sort of live commentary that thing can be found in the description box down below and if you do happen to run into any issues you could check that out and maybe see what the difference is between your group and my group are if you still have any questions left after that I'd be happy to answer them and if this gets enough positive feedback I guess I could also do some updated tutorials on the other incursions or maybe some legendary missions I don't really know if that's what people want to see on this channel so for now this is going to be all as always, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Or, like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.